others out of experience and or some kind of inner conscious uh, now that you mentioned Vedas in Vedas there there are many aspects one aspect is uh, they are talking about the constellations you know, the arrangement of galaxies in great detail with diagrams, with mathematical calculations and so many other aspects of uh, galactic constellation. Today modern cosmologists see these diagrams and calculations and they say, these kind of constellations could have existed only hundred thousand years ago. Based on this we say, Rig Veda is over hundred thousand years old. There are other factors also to prove this, but this is one of them. Now, these constellations that the cosmologists are talking about can be viewed only with very powerful telescopes. Hundred thousand years ago in India, definitely there was no telescope. I'm sure there was not even a lens. Then how did they see it? They saw it with eyes closed, not with eyes open because everything that's worth knowing can be known from within rather than trying to learn from other ways. I have taken a lot of care to ensure that I never read any scriptures or anything spiritual. The only things that I read is Asterix or Dennis the Menace and you know, <laughs> just pure wisdom. <laughs> Spirituality and reading is totally not allowed, no spiritual reading. But everything that's worth knowing is within you, not outside of you. Apart from that information, you know today you go on the internet, for ages there has been a yogic net. <laughs> Whatever work that people did, see if you work with your body, with your physical body, or with your muscle, the span of that work or the lifespan of that work is very limited. If you use your mind and do work, the lifespan of that work is little more, it lasts a little longer. If you use your inner energies and do work, the lifespan of that is eternal. Now, I talk about Gautama or Jesus or anybody with absolute authority, not because I am a scholar, I have not even read anything, simply because as, I, as far as I am concerned, they are not 2500 years ago, for me they are today, because one part of their work is always alive. Those people who did things beyond their body and mind, their work is always alive. If planet Earth goes away, still their work is alive, it will not go away. So that's always there. So this is what is being referred to as the grace of the masters. I'm just talking about two people because somehow they got to be well known. They were good with their marketing, both of them. <laughs> Other yogis and sages are unknown to you. That does not make them any less beautiful. It is just that they never bother to market themselves, they just stayed. Like I've been around for twenty years, people have barely heard of me because we started marketing only in the last two years or two and a half years time. Till then, there was absolutely no marketing. People knew us like, like we are some secret school, nobody knows that we exist. But at the same time, lakhs of people have gone through our programs, just by word of mouth. As a rule, no brochure, no poster, no banner, no television, no newspaper, we never entered anything. Then people thought we are some kind of secret school and something must be happening there and they started giving us negative publicity. Then we decided anyway they're giving us publicity, let's go out and say what we want to say. <laughs> they started saying all kinds of weird things about us, so we said, okay, let's step up and speak up for ourselves. And also because we are launching this rural rejuvenation program in Tamil Nadu state, 
In all the 13,000 villages, we are setting up centers to rejuvenate rural life with yoga and other aspects. So, we are launching medical dispensary, tr mobile dispensaries on the trucks. About 150 trucks will be launched in the next few years. A few are going. Just some of the Detroit meditators just now sponsored one truck this uh, two days ago. So, <clears throat> because this work is being taken up, we are seeking publicity now. We need, we need money. That's why I'm here. I need lots of money. <laughs> this will service about 60 million people. These 150 trucks will be servicing about 60 million people. It's a huge thing. In terms of investment, it's nothing for that large a population. So, knowing something is not by reading. By reading what you know. What you know by a book is <clears throat> it'll, it will forsake you somewhere. Whatever you learn by book reading, it is going to forsake you somewhere. You may be an expert in Vedas and Upanishads and Bibles and Qurans, you may speak very authoritatively, but when it comes to your own stuff, you will not have anything because what you gather intellectually will not liberate you. What you gather intellectually will nourish you only to a certain point. But only what comes from within takes you beyond your limitations. That's why so much significance is given for meditation, always it's been given. For those of you who come from these cultures, you know, even in Jesus' life he went about doing certain things and then he withdrew into the mountains to be by himself. Yes. Do you know certain periods of his life he's absent? Because without an inward turn, what you do outside has really no meaning. So getting lost in activity is very easy, but without turning inward and being sustained by that, it doesn't mean anything. And anyway, like internet, there is a yogic net. You can access it. Everything that you ever want to know is there. And I don't carry I don't carry what I know with me at all. It's not in my memory. When I walk on the street, I'm absolute empty. When I need something, it's there. Till now, in this last twenty years since I started involving myself with people, so many kinds of situations have come in front of me. Situations means I'm talking about spiritual situations. Not once have I been left not knowing what to do, nor have I studied this. It is just that what needs to be done is always there. Very complex situations, not simple situations, very, very complex situations. But what I need to know is always there and I don't have the problem of carrying this in my memory. I don't have to burden myself with knowledge. I walk light like a child without knowing anything. But what you need to know is always there. This is what is referred to as grace. The grace of the masters is just that. They left their work to be there forever. If you wrote it down, it wouldn't be there, it would be misinterpreted. This cannot be misinterpreted. If you access it, it's pure knowledge. <clears throat> For more on Sadhguru, visit www.ishafoundation.org.